And you're listening to the morning program with me, Ian Henschke, and we welcome Gerald Salente to 2015. Um, hello, Gerald. Hello, Ian. Thanks for having me on. Happy oh. New Year. A little late, but here we go. Yeah, I know. We're still in the first month. Uh, off we go. Now, the trends. Let's just have a look at one quick trend. The weather over your way. Now, we saw that someone had predicted that you were going to be snowed in, that the pipes would be bursting, that uh, it was going to be a dreadful time for people in New York and upstate New York, uh, but it didn't work out that way. So someone got the trend wrong, the forecast wrong. Well, not only did they get the forecast wrong, I mean, you know, I, you may not be able to tell by my accent, mm -hmm. but, you know, I'm a native New Yorker, and I've been around a long time. I've never seen a clown show, that the one that they put on, like they just did a couple of days ago. Here's what happened. The mayor of New York declared a state of emergency long before the snow started falling. He did not allow, he told people to get off the streets and get off the sidewalks. As a matter of fact, you know, they've been delivering food on bicycles, you know, these baskets in New York City for about 100 years. He said food delivery was, quote, a convenience, and this is even if people had no food, and that bicycles are not emergency vehicles and they should not be allowed on the streets. We would get a fine. We had an inch and a half of snow. They closed down the bridges going across the river. I'm about two hours north. They got six inches of snow down there. This isn't a big deal for us. They closed down the bridges, and if you got caught uh, uh, driving, you would get a $300 fine. He said people have to stay off the streets and stay off the sidewalks, end quote. This is, this, I've never, and this is going on everywhere. Every time there's a little something, you have a bunch of people coming out calling themselves mayor this, senator that, congressman that, or president this, is telling you how to run your life. There was a total shutdown here. So, so a, 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 kid, a kid couldn't even go out and make a snowman on the sidewalk? Well, they could make a snowman, but under the new laws, you can't call it a snowman. You have to call it Frosty, the transgender snow person. Maybe then it would be okay. And no snowball throwing. You have these cops blowing you away for throwing lethal snowballs. I have never seen such a disgrace, and it's everywhere. This is a country that's become little boys and girls. Their leaders tell them what to do, how to do it, when to do it. Get back in the house, no playing in the snow. If you get caught playing in the snow again, you're going to have a, you know, you're not going to be able to go out and play anymore. All right. Well, now let's move on to international affairs now. Greece. Now, uh, they've just elected a person that was a former communist, and one of the first acts that he did was go to a memorial uh, where the Nazis had uh, shot some communists back at the end of World War II, and they say there's a symbolic act. In other words, he, he's sort of reminding people of the, the, the war, the Germans, and then he's uh, putting on a, uh, a wreath for the communists. Well, it, it is symbolic in, in a number of ways. I mean, Germany's the big one in Europe that's pushing the, uh, the austerity measures. And let's call austerity measures what they are. Austerity measures mean that the banks and the governments made real bad bets. And they're forcing the pe they force the people to pay off those bets by doing things like raising VAT taxes, raising property taxes, selling off valuable private assets, uh, public assets, to their private friends for pennies on the dollar. And this is at a time when the economy is going down, they're taxing the people more, cutting social services, cutting pensions and benefits. I believe they've cut, they've cut uh, uh, pensions till after you die, then maybe you could get them. And this isn't only in Greece. It's going on throughout many countries in Europe, in Spain, in Portugal. And by the way, that's why you see all of these new parties emerging. So any time that there's a new party, you read the Financial Times, for example, they look at the new uh, 
uh, party in Greece, and they call them left-wing radical parties. Mm. Who are the people in power? How about <laughs> how about how about status quo madmen criminals? You ever call them that? Okay, now j just have a look at this issue though in Greece. Though I found it amazing to read the figure of the amount of money that had been pumped into Greece. Now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard that it was $340 billion. $340,000 million has been uh, lent to Greece. The population of Greece is $11 million. They'll never be able to pay it off, and the people know it. This is servitude. These are, you know, by the way, all things are connected. We're talking about Greece. But with what we're really talking about is the IMF and the European Union. You go back, you see all the problems going on in Ukraine. Go back a year ago, December 13th, 2013, and you look and listen to, anybody could do it, go on YouTube and put in the name Victoria Newland, N-U-L-A-N-D. She's the Assistant Secretary of State of the United States. Over her left shoulder at the National Press Club in D.C. and over is a Chevron sign. Over her right shoulder is an Exxon sign. And here are her words. Not exactly, but very close. The path for Ukraine to take is follow the one set forth by the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. That's, and look at the wonderful, they did. They did look at the great job they got going on now in Ukraine. Now you go back to Greece. This is another IMF deal. People better start giving the right name to IMF. It's not International Monetary Fund. It's the International Mafia Federation. They just have different names. Okay, so uh, Greece is going to try and uh, buck this by putting in a, a left-wing uh, politician. How do you think they'll go? Will he end up being... Um you know, moved on, as they say? No, I believe what's going to happen is they'll cut a deal, we'll, we'll, we'll change your, your payment schedule. You know, just like you do, you know, they'll, they'll try to make it happen. And when you really look at the election, I think like 4% less people came out this time than the one before. He had to make a deal with a, you really want to call a right-wing party, one over to the right to get a coalition. If it was really the support of the people, he would have gotten a much higher number. They'll cut a deal. Okay. Uh, we're talking to Gerald Salento, the publisher of the Trends Journal, for the first time in 2015. Gerald's take on the world is always interesting. Now, Gerald, um, the thing that we're noticing here in Australia, and I wonder you, whether you're seeing it over in the US, is the rapidly falling price of fuel at the petrol pump. Now, I went past a service station this morning, 95 cents, and then if you, you know, buy a roll of toilet paper or something, shop at the supermarket, it brings it down another eight cents. So you're down to about 87 cents a litre. Now, that is almost half what it was a few years ago. Why is this happening? Is this because the, the Saudi king or whatever died the other day? Is it because the, the, they want to blow the Russians out off the oil market? What's going on? Well, that's the, the theory was when it started falling. The prices peaked in June of 2015. And we do trends in the news each weekday. We follow gold, oil, and, and uh, the markets, among other things. So we're right on top of this. When oil peaked in 2015 uh, at, at $115 a barrel in June, uh, we believed that it was going to go higher because of summer driving season. And the prices started going lower. And, then the, and the reason they had gone up was turmoil in the Middle East and Ukraine. So we thought it was a play against Russia and the Saudis and the Americans working together to do it. It's not that. It's become one of our top trends for 2015. It's called price wars. There's too much product on the market and not enough demand. And that you don't only have to look at oil for that. You have to look at copper prices. They're at five and a half year lows. Iron ore. You could buy a ton of iron ore in China. I think it's like $63 a ton for less than you could buy a ton of cabbage. There's too much nickel, and it's not only commodities. You look what happened before the Christmas holidays. I don't know what happened in Australia, but here, weeks before Christmas Day, 50 to 70 percent off. There's too much product and not enough people with money to buy the stuff. 
Look what's going on in Europe with the new ECB law that they just they, they pushed through. They're going to be buying 60 billion euros worth of government bonds and other bonds. And they're saying the problem is deflation. Now, I've been studying economics since 101 you know, when I first year in college in the 60s. Nobody ever said anything that deflation was a bad thing. They're saying that the reason deflation is bad, they're making up this story, that if people know that prices in the supermarkets are going to go down, they're going to hold off their purchases of goods and services, understanding that they're going to go lower. No, they're not. The reason that you have deflation is people don't have enough money to buy this stuff. It's supply and demand. There's too much supply and not enough demand. I, Am I making this up? No. Look, no really. Listen to this. Yes, go on. I, I mean, one of the things that just uh, reminded me of, there's been a big deal done here in uh, Adelaide for a huge parcel of land, which they say is going to be a gas and mining and oil hub, and one of the partners is Halliburton. I mean, do you think that'll happen? Because if you're saying we're in a deflationary period and there's going to be less interest and uh, less demand for gas and oil and minerals, uh, what do you think the chance of having a, a big hub that's going to employ 6,000 people in Adelaide? Well, it's always the story. It's going to it's going to uh, create jobs. They always say that Halliburton. That's the con that's the company that Dick Cheney, before he became president, was the head of. Maybe Cheney will come to Australia. He'll show you how to run things. Here's the deal. When I'm talking about lower oil prices, we have a crisis going on over here in the states because of all of the shale oil, and the, and same thing up in Canada with their tar sands. You have 17 to 20 percent of the junk bonds in America are related to the energy industry because of the boom in shale. Halliburton is one of the only companies out there saying that prices are going to go up. And it's not because this is a global slowdown. Look what's going on in China. You just saw the Shanghai index a couple of weeks ago. It went down 8% in one day. They're dumping money in there, too. This is, again, it's a supply and demand issue. If China isn't making things, the reason they're not making them is because the Europeans and Americans aren't buying the stuff. And if the Americans aren't buying it and the Chinese aren't making it, you think they need iron ore from Australia? Do you think they need more copper? They, China consumes 40% of all new copper production. Look what's going on in Chile. Look what's going on with their currency. They're not exporting like they used to. Well, this is so, not no, good. I don't see this as a good play at all. Mm. The play will play out. They'll give them loan guarantees. They'll give them infrastructure repair. They'll give them tax breaks. And Halliburton will win as they usually do, and the people will lose, as they usually do when they do these sweet deals, if it's going to be one of those sweet deals. Mm. Well, it is apparently a sweet deal, according to many people here. Um, but now, look, now let, let's move on to something uh, uh, that's popped up here last week. We had an electric vehicle turn up, which apparently has been exported from America. It's the Tesla uh, car, and we're told this is going to be the way of the future. I mean, if people start driving electric cars, you won't need... Uh, to fill them up with uh, petrol. I mean, is, is that becoming a big trend? Uh, Gerald Sunday, publisher of the Trends Journal? Yeah, well, maybe not the Tesla. You know, it has a very limited market. It's an expensive car. And it, it, it's breaking new ground, but it's not there yet. One of the top trends for 2015 we're looking at is called Dominant Energy. Our science editor, his name is Ben Davis, one of the tops in the country, if not the world. There are breakthroughs happening all over. They're happening in Italy. They're happening. They're they're happening in. in they're even happening in, in China. You're going to start seeing new nuclear where they're using thorium and uranium, so it's not as explosive, and you don't have these meltdowns. You're looking at zero point energy. You're looking at things beyond wind, solar, geothermal, and biofuel. And it's happening, ironically, at a time when the fossil fuel business is under pressure. Think about it, Ian. At one time, from probably from, Grover, from Julius Caesar to Grover Cleveland, the world's leaders went to their inaugurations and coronations in horse and buggy. 
And then all of a sudden there was this thing called an automobile, and that was alternative. One time they used to have candle power, and then there was the electric light bulb. The light bulb was the alternative. That is where we're at now. These breakthrough energies are not the alternatives anymore. They're going to become the dominance. The fossil fuels are going to become the alternatives. They'll still be around, but you're not going to use them much anymore. Think about it. Here we are in the 21st century, and we're burning fossil fuels. The breakthroughs are happening. And, and, and they're going to change the landscape. By the way, do you think everybody would be over there bowing to the king in Saudi Arabia if their major export was broccoli? So the whole Middle East and geopolitical landscape changes. They could care less. Well, that might change the Middle East quite a lot. Now, talking about bowing and scraping to kings, did the story about our Prime Minister Tony Abbott um, giving uh, Mr Windsor... Uh, a, uh, I mean, the, the Duke of Edinburgh, of course, he's married to uh, Elizabeth Windsor, uh, the Queen of the Commonwealth. Uh, he's married to her. He's been given a knighthood by the Australian government. Now, did that make the news? Because Rupert Murdoch's been tweeting and talking about it. No, it doesn't make the news. Yeah, the only Abbott they know in the States is Abbott and Costello. But looking at this guy that you have over there, he'd probably fit the bill. Because, you know, it's really what, they, what they're doing is what they all believe. I told you the arrogance of the, of the people in charge over here where they don't let you go play out in the snow anymore. These people are royalty. I'm not making it up. Every time a president, a prime minister, a chancellor, a secretary of this or that shows up, what do they do? They go in these gigantic airplanes – they roll out the red carpets, and a bunch of people salute. They are royalty. They're work, walking on red carpets. And from what I know, I mean, didn't you guys have a referendum back there in 1999 to remove the queen as the head of state? So I guess, um, uh, you know, Abbott's still looking up to the head. All right. Thank you very much for your time for the heads up this morning. Wonderful to talk to you again, as always, Gerald Salento. Uh, one of our listeners says, I wonder if you, there's something you're happy about. Perhaps you could talk about that next time. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Good on you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you.